Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that further proceedings under roll call be dispensed with and the Sergeant at Arms be instructed to bring in the absent members. On that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Again, all those against, nay, all, uh, the secretary will close the roll. Having a brain fart today. Yeah. Members, please stand for the prayer. Today's chaplain is Bishop Richard Howell, Jr. from Shiloh Temple International Ministries in Minneapolis. And following the prayer, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for life, strength, and happiness. Your peace that passes all understanding continues even today. As we ask you, Lord, to bless this chamber, bless this chamber with the baptism of hope, that we'll be able, Lord, to pursue the kingdom business, what's necessary for our public, necessary for our community, and for our state. We honor you and we thank you. In your glorious name we pray, amen. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> The secretary will take the roll. Senators Abler, Anderson, Bach, Benson, Bigham, Carlson, Chamberlain, Champion, Clausen, Coleman, Swazinski, Dames, Dibble, Dornick, Dreheim, Duckworth, Dietzik, Eaton, Eichhorn, Eakin, Fate, Friends, Gazelka, Gagan, Herr, Hoffman, Housley, Howe, Ingerbritson, Isaacson, Jasinski, Johnson, Johnson, Stewart, Kent, Kiffmeyer, Klein, Coran, Kunish, Lang, Latz, Limmer, Lopez, Franzen, Marty, Matthews, McEwen, Miller, Murphy, Nelson, Newman, Newton, Osmick, Pappas, Port, Pratt, Putnam, Rarick, Rust, Rosen, Rood, Senjum, Thomasoni, Torres, Ray, Utke, Weber, Westrom, Weger, Wickland. Pursuant to Rule 14.1, the following members intend to vote under Rule 40.7. Senators Anderson, Swadzinski, Dibble, Eaton, Eichhorn, Fate, Howe, Johnson, Stewart, Kent, Kunish, Latz, Marty, Newman, Newton, and Wicklin. A quorum is present. Beginning under the third order of business, messages from the House. The Secretary will read the message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce that the House has acceded to the request of the Senate for an appointment of a conference committee consisting of five members of the House on the amendments adopted by the House of the following Senate file. Senate file number 4410, a bill for an act relating to health and human services. There has been appointed as such committee on the part of the House, Liebling, Schultz, Gomez, Pinto, and Albright. Senate file number 4410 is herewith returned to the Senate. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. No action is required. The Secretary will read the next message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House that the following Senate file is amended by the House in which the amendments to the concurrence of the Senate is respectfully requested. Senate file number 4091, a bill for an act relating to state government appropriating money for commerce, jobs, and economic growth. Senate file number 4091 is herewith returned to the Senate. Patrick D. Murphy. Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of Senator Pratt, I move that the Senate do not concur in the amendments by the House to Senate File 4091 and that a conference committee of five members be appointed by the subcommittee on conference committees <coughs> on the part of the Senate to act with a like conference committee appointed on the part of the House. To that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, the motion does fail. The secretary will read the next message. Mr. President, I have the honor to announce that the House refuses to concur in the Senate amendments to House File Number 4300, a bill for an act relating to education finance. The House respectfully requests that a conference committee of five members be appointed thereon. Dabney, Sandstead, Richardson, Hassan, and Erickson have been appointed to such committee on the part of the House. House File Number 43. Is herewith transmitted to the Senate with a request that the Senate appoint a like committee. Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. Senator Chamberlain. I move that the Senate accede to the request of the House for a conference committee on House File Number 4300 and that a conference committee of five members be appointed by the subcommittee on conference committees on the part of the Senate to act with a like conference committee appointed on the part of the House. To that Thank motion. You. To that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. The secretary will read the next message. 
Mr. President, I have the honor to announce the passage by the House of the following House file here are transmitted. House file number 3669, Patrick D. Murphy, Chief Clerk, House of Representatives. No action is required. We move to the fourth order of business, first reading of House bills. The House file is given its first reading and referred as indicated. Senator Miller. Senator Miller, first reading. Senator Miller. Uh, Mr. President, are we on the fourth order of business? Correct. Okay, Mr. President, I move that the House file number 3669 be referred to the Committee on Taxes. <coughs> to that motion, discussion. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, motion does prevail. Moving to the fifth order of business, there's one committee report to be read by the secretary. Senator Rosen from the Committee on Finance, to which was re-referred Senate file number 4233, a bill for an act relating to the military appropriating money for enlistment incentives. Reports the same back with a recommendation the bill be amended as follows, delete everything after the enacting clause and insert, and when so amended, the bill do pass. Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the committee reports printed in the agenda and read by the secretary be adopted. To that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, the motion does prevail. We move to the sixth order of business, second reading of Senate bills. The secretary will read the Senate file numbers. Senate file numbers 4209, 2969, 3636, and 4223. The Senate files are given their second reading. Moving to the seventh order of business, sev second reading of House bills. The Secretary will read the House file number. House file number 3438. House files give its second reading. Moving to the eighth order of business, introduction and first reading of Senate bills. The bills in today's introduction calendar are given their first reading and referred as indicated. Moving to the ninth order of business, motions and resolutions. We will adopt the author's motion in one motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. Senate Resolution Number 135 is referred to the Committee on Rules and Administration. Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. Pursuant to Rule 26, I designate the following bills made uh, special orders for immediate consideration. Members, the list is on your desk. Members, we have two bills on special orders today. First bill is Senate File 4025, Number 95 on General Order, Senator Rosen. Thank you, Mr. President. I am very honored to have Senate File 4025 before this body. It is the opioid settlement. Members, last summer, the state signed on to the National Opioid Epidemic Settlement. The state, 87 counties, and 140 Minnesota cities filed lawsuits. Senate File 4025 is necessary to reflect the technical changes required from the 2019 legislation in order to capture the settlement funds. But let me go back to the 2019 legislation, which is very important to this whole discussion. It's loud. Members, uh, it is a bit loud. The author needs to be uh, heard, and I need to hear her too. So, Senator Rosen. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the 2019 legislation was a landmark piece of legislation, one of the first in the nation. We should be very proud of that piece of legislation. It created a licensing and registration fee increase on our opioid manufacturers and distributors to fund the Opioid Epidemic Response Fund. The 2019 bill negotiated a 50-50 split. 50% of the money that came in from those licensing and registration fees went to the counties and tribes for out-of-home placement costs, and that was um, due to drug-related abuse cases using the data from previous calendar years. The remaining 50% was for ORAC, and that is the Opioid Epidemic Response Advisory Council. And I'd like to thank Senator Eaton, Senator Kunish, our own Senator Coran for serving on this council. has been a very integral part of this opioid response that we have in place in the state. And at the time, we knew of lawsuits and the potential litigation, but we were uncertain of the mechanics and how those settlement funds would be coming in. The state now is projected to receive over $300 million. 
On July 21st of this summer, last summer, a $26 billion offer to settle was made by our opioid manufacturers, Johnson & Johnson for $5 billion, and the big three distributors, McKesson, Amerisource Bergen, and Cardinal Health for $21 billion to resolve their liabilities, liabilities in over 3,000 opioid-related lawsuits nationwide. In November 2021, McKinsey settled for nearly $600 million with 49 states over their role in the opioid crisis and their sales advice to drug makers, including Purdue Pharma. After the signing of the National uh, Compact, there, there was four months of negotiations, and the AG office carefully negotiated with our state and local government to reach a comprehensive agreement for allocation of our Minnesota opioid funds. All 87 counties, the state, and 140 cities signed on to that agreement. And as part of the multi-state national settlement, the companies want current lawsuits resolved and want to prevent future lawsuits. Without this new legislation, state and local governments must then reopen these negotiations. So in order to guarantee Minnesota receives all entitled funds without delay, a statutory claims bar is needed to release any remaining claims and prevent future claims. So the Attorney General's office worked closely with the Association of Minnesota Counties, the League of Minnesota Cities, the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities, and they negotiated a 75% county and city payment and 25% of uh, for the state share, which would go all to ORAC. If that was, if without the legislation, it would have been a 60-40 split, 40% to the state and 60% to local government. Well, that sounds really great. However, the 40% to the state would have been divided up the 50-50 share. So the state would only receive 20%. So the state is actually receiving a, a good, Everybody's receiving a good deal from this new negotiated percentage. Um, at the national level, the formula was developed based on overdose deaths, the number of pills shipped, and the rates of addiction. But the really important piece to this negotiated um, settlement is that the money goes directly to the counties and cities and not to DHS. That was extremely important for, for the um, counties and cities. DHS then is required to establish a new account along with the original registration and licensing fee accounts. So we're going to have two accounts, one registration licensing fee account and one settlement account. The rev revenue from the opioid registration fee and licensing fee, which is about 13 to 14 million a year, didn't hit quite the threshold that we were hoping, will go into that registration license fee account. And the monies received by the state resulting from the settlement agreement will be deposited into the settlement account. The opioid registration and licensing fee will be reduced uh, when it hits that $250 million settlement. And with the, the spreadsheet that the companies have agreed to, that amount will coincide with the 2031 deadline that is in the bill. The original deadline for the fees to be reduced was 2024, but it had to reach that $250 million dollar threshold and that was highly negotiated and we are very we feel very good about that the house actually only wanted the 25 percent share of the state's fund to go to that 250 million but we were able to negotiate the full amount that's coming to the state to be able to go into that 250 million dollar threshold um, mr president i do have the a7 amendment Senator Rosen moves the A7 amendment. The secretary will report the amendment. Senator Rosen moves to amend Senate file number 4025 as follows, page five after line six, insert. This is the A7 amendment. To the A7 amendment, Senator Rosen. Thank you, Mr. President. The A7 addresses the reporting requirements for the municipalities that are receiving the direct payments from the settlement account. And the reporting requirements have been agreed to by the Attorney General's Office, DHS, American, uh, the, the Association of Minnesota Counties, and the League of Minnesota Cities. Also, there is additional appropriations to DHS from the settlement account for administrating the grants awarded by <coughs> 
by uh, ORAC from the settlement count and for collecting, collating, and monitoring compliance with reporting requirements. So I ask your, for your support on the A7, Mr. President. Discussion to the A7 amendment. Seeing none, all those in favor of the A7 amendment signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. The amendment is adopted. Senator Rosen. Thank you, Mr. President. I just would like to just spend a second, too, on the results first of this bill. That's been a really important part for the uh, treatment of this of our opioid epidemic. And Project Ecto had a results first um, review, and it came out um, with flying colors. And we have five hubs in the state. We have one at Henneman Healthcare, St. Gabriel's Wayside Recovery Center, and the latest is Stratus Health. And they've provided in this report a very in-depth and valuable response to what the state needs to do next. So I feel very good about uh, funding the results first. It does say, though, in this report, although prescription opioids continue co to contribute to the opioid epidemic, the driving factor behind increasing opioid overdo overdose deaths has shifted to illicit opioids like heroin and fentanyl. So in other words, we have a lot of work to continue, and that's why it's so important that we get this settlement uh, account ready and up and we get the money out into the field. There are further negotiations with Purdue Pharma and Mallinckrodt and others. And um, Mr. President, members, I am open for questions. Discussion and amendments to Senate File 4025. Any further discussion before we go to third reading? Seeing none, the secretary will give the bill's third reading. Senate file number 4025, a bill for an act relating to opioids. Third reading, Senator Bingham. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think this is just a, a very, very, very important bill for our communities and the work and effort that has gone into this by so many stakeholders, whether it's Senator Rosen, uh, Senator Eaton, um, the, the local government partners and recovery partners. This is um, truly um, an opportunity to bring resources into an area that is desperately needed. And I just want to also say it's vitally important, and I appreciate Senator Rosen highlighting this, the direct payment to our counties and cities because too many times we've seen um, that it gets caught up up here, Mr. President, and so being able to have the direct payment to them, to the counties and cities to be able to work maybe with our schools for educational purposes uh, for students and families, um, and again, treatment programs and, and awareness issues in our community. Um, I appreciate that, and I know this isn't probably the last time on this floor that we will talk about um, uh, opioids and fentanyl, and so this is just one part of um, trying to combat this epidemic, so thank you. Senator Kunish. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise in support of this bill. Uh, five years ago, as a new uh, House member, the very first bill that I carried was to uh, allow for education in the school around addiction and specifically around opioid addictions because the youth uh, were, were using drugs in a way that were, were killing them right and left. And um, while that bill didn't make its way to where I wanted it, uh, this opioid settlement allows for that educational uh, component, not just for our students, but for our communities. Uh, I really appreciate the fact that this agreement came between uh, local entities and state entities, uh, and uh, that so much of it is going to those local communities and those local um, resources that really understand their communities best and the best approach to addressing this this uh, epidemic of uh, addiction across our con our country and our state I want to thank Julie Ro uh, representative or Senator Rosen Senator Eaton for their hard hard work and often emotional work on this the state staff and then the house members uh, I joined this the ORC group late in the fall and uh, 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 I 
It was a large learning curve for me. I certainly appreciate the incredible work and the amount of time that all of those uh, members put in to make sure that this is a, a sound bill and that those funds are going to the appropriate places. We have, uh, as Senator Rosen said, so much work left to do with the rise in fentanyl deaths and too often um, you know, those are instant deaths. The amount of fentanyl that is being laced or put into some of these uh, drugs is instant death for too many. And unfortunately, two uh, close uh, families that I know lost their sons in the fall to this, this awful, awful uh, addiction. And so members, uh, with, the, with the appreciation and the guidance of the ORIC group, I would um, ask for a green vote on this bill. Thank you. Senator Sengem. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, uh, I just want to rise. Uh, in terms of certainly not only supporting this bill, but to uh, offer accolades to an individual that has worked in the substance abuse area all of her Senate career, whether it's methamphetamines or today opioids. Senator Rosen has led this legislature throughout her entire career, frankly, in this area. I and mean, she's done remarkable work, and it's been hard work. This, is, this bill is hard work. So Senator Rosen, I think on behalf of all of us, and I think I can speak for the people of Minnesota that are aware of your work, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for this bill today. And members, I certainly urge its unanimous support. Thank you. Any further discussion? Senator Rosen. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. You know, drug overdoses now, now kill over 100,000 people in the U.S. every year, according to the CDC. That's more than car crashes or suicide. And many with opioid use disorders have shifted from taking prescription pain pills to street fentanyl. As we were talking about the other day on this floor, there's 1,500 deaths, the largest ever in this state, due to overdoses currently. And Minnesota has become a distribution center for illicit drugs. So members, please stand with me and recognize the justice that Senate File 4025 brings to the many victims and their families for this horrific journey that they have been on. Unfortunately, there is a tremendous, tremendous amount of work, as we've talked about, that needs to continue, stopping the illicit drugs like heroin and fentanyl, car fentanyl, car fentanyl into the, our communities. But for now, we can be assured that there is compensation for the abuse we have endured, endured uh, at the hands of these large companies. The most effective way to address this epidemic is to get the money into the, our professionals and get that out into our cities and our counties. They're doing the work. And as Johnson and Johnson said, direct support for state and local efforts to make meaningful progress in addressing the opioid crisis. I just would like to have a couple moments of special thanks, of course, to Senator Eaton. She's been on this journey more. Her sacrifice, as you all know, has been tremendous, more so than any of us on this floor. And she has been wonderful to work with. And unfortunately, she was not able to be with us today. But I am um, especially fond of Senator Eaton and all the work she's done in this area. Senator Coran, of course, Senator Kunish, for your work on ORAC. My colleagues in the House, Representative Olson and Representative Baker, another one who has suffered greatly in this, this tragic situation. Our Attorney General Office, the Attorney General and especially Mr. Eric Maloney, who I worked closely with, I'd like to thank, and the Office of Collaboration and Dispute Resolution, the Association of Minnesota Counties and the League of Minnesota Cities and the, the um, Council of Greater Minnesota Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities have been just, just steady and very collaborative. And of course, could not have done this without Katie Kavanaugh, our last great piece of work together. So please, members, stand with me and um, let's get this bill going. Thank you. The Secretary will take the roll on final passage of Senate File 4025 as amended.
call on Senator Jasinski to report members for voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson votes aye. Anderson votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Eichhorn votes aye. Eichhorn votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Howe votes aye. Howe votes aye. Senator Jasinski. Senator Newman votes aye. Newman votes aye. Call on Senator Frentz to report members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Frentz. Thank you, Mr. President. I report Senator Swadzinski votes aye. Swadzinski votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Dibble votes aye. Dibble votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Fatay votes aye. Fatay votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Isaacson votes aye. Senator Frentz. Senator Marty votes aye. Marty votes aye. Senator Frentz. And Senator Wicklin votes aye. Wicklin votes aye. All members having voted with the desire to vote, the Secretary will close the roll. There being 66 ayes and no nays, Senate File 4025, as amended, does pass and is title agreed to. <laughs> members, second and final bill on general order, uh, special orders today is Senate File 3008, number 31 on general orders, Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. President and members. And Senate File 3008 deals with the, uh, uh, it's a bill relating to the act of uh, retailing liquor and prohibiting exclusive contracts for distiller, distillers and amends the Section 340A-307. Shortly after the session closed last spring, the Miami-based Southern Glazers and Wine and Spirits filed a, a suit against the state of Minnesota alleging that the exclusivity in Minnesota was non-constitutional. The Coleman Act is what I'm going to refer to. This bill refers to what's commonly known as the Coleman Act, it was passed in 1973. And in 1973, the Coleman Act allowed for exclusivity for products distilled in Minnesota and distributed in Minnesota by Minnesota distributors, but disallowed exclusivity on a national basis. So this is what was being challenged by the Miami-based uh, organization called Southern Glazers. We put a bill in the first part of a special session that would remove exclusivity in Minnesota and continue it on a national basis. We ended up uh, at the beginning of this session uh, moving that Senate file forward. On March 29th, the courts ruled that the exclusivity in Minnesota was illegal. And so what this bill does as it removes exclusivity in Minnesota, but allows exclusive, but, and, and also does not allow exclusivity on a national basis. So with this bill, we would no longer have, have exclusive, exclusivity between distillers and distributors nationwide or in the state of Minnesota. The courts ruled on it on March 29th and stayed their ruling based on they felt that this would be something that could be uh, taken care of by the legislators. And the ruling has stayed for 60 days until May 29th. So by passing the Senate file 3008, we will have non-exclusivity in Minnesota, we'll have non-exclusivity on a nationwide basis, and that would solve the dilemma and also take care of the ruling in the courts. So at this point, I'll open it up for any questions or comments. Members, discussion and amendments to Senate File 3008, Senator Kent. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I rise to support Senate File um, 3008. Um, we've heard really compelling testimony from uh, our local small businesses. Uh, local bars, local restaurants, uh, local liquor stores, the municipal liquor stores, uh, they feel strongly that by enacting this legislation, it is the best way to ensure 
healthy competition in the marketplace to make sure that as these smaller businesses, that they still can receive fair prices, which they then are able to pass on to customers, that they receive um, better selection that reflects the local community's wishes, and that they um, will get much better service. And this is particularly some of the most um, uh, compelling testimony I believe we've heard comes from folks in um, greater Minnesota, in, in more remote communities where the trucks don't just come through every single day. And they need that customer service. They need um, uh, a distribution that's going to be responsive. And uh, for that reason, members, I fully support 3008 and uh, encourage a green vote. Senator Latz. Uh, members, I join in uh, Senator Dames and Senator Kent's recommendation to support this bill. Uh, there are good policy reasons that Senator Kent has just identified. Uh, why we should make sure that uh, for distillers uh, the playing field is level and, and the uh, retailers have the option of getting their product uh, from more than one uh, supplier, more than one wholesaler. Um, the, uh, the remedy here, as Senator Dames indicated, um, that is, was already available in, in legislation that had been proposed, um, was recognized by the federal court as an option for resolving the Commerce Clause problems that they saw uh, with Minnesota's current statute. Uh, basically letting um, uh, Minnesota distillers distribute um, through anyone they want to um, and could not sign an exclusive contract um, and, uh, and holding the same standards then available uh, for the uh, national uh, producers. Anyone from outside the state of Minnesota also then would not be allowed to engage in a, an exclusive contract for distribution. So all parties, uh, regardless of where the uh, product is produced, or, or originates would be subject to the same set of rules. Uh, that would not infringe on the Commerce Clause and uh, would remedy the, the infirmity that the federal court found. So I encourage people to support this legislation to accomplish that goal. Any further discussion? Senate File 3008. Seeing now the Secretary will give the bill its third reading. Senate File Number 3008, a bill for an act relating to liquor. Third reading. Any closing comments? Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. President and members. And uh, this bill does uh, promote uh, competition, also will allow for stable availability. And as Senator Kent remarked, uh, it certainly is uh, uh, a bill that's going to be helping the state of Minnesota, especially rural Minnesota. So members, uh, with that, I really appreciate the support, would appreciate a green vote. And Mr. President, I'd just like to thank the folks that helped work on this. Uh, Lauren Dower, my CA, Owen Neubauer, the committee administrator, Chris Stang, and uh, Mr. Mum, and also Senator Bigham and Senator Kent for the work that you've done on this to help get this to the point it's at. So thank you, folks, and I'd appreciate a green vote. Seeing no further discussion, the secretary will take the roll on final passage of Senate File 3008.
Call on Senator Friends to report members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Friends. Thank you, Mr. President. I report Senator Swadzinski votes aye. Swadzinski votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Dibble votes aye. Dibble votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Eaton votes aye. Eaton votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Fatay votes aye. Fatay votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Johnson Stewart votes aye. Johnson Stewart votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Isaacson votes aye. Isaacson votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Kunish votes aye. Kunish votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Marty votes aye. Marty votes aye. Senator Friends. And Senator Wicklin votes aye. Wicklin votes aye. Call on Senator Jasinski to report members voting under Rule 40.7. Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Anderson votes aye. Anderson votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Eichhorn votes aye. Eichhorn votes aye. Senator Friends. Senator Howe votes aye. Howe votes aye. Senator Friends. Uh, <laughs> Senator Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. President. Again. This is Senator Jasinski reporting the note, uh, <laughs> vote for Senator Newman. Senator Newman votes aye. Newman votes aye. Thank you, Senator Jasinski. You two look similar. Um, All members having voted with the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 66 ayes and zero nays, Senate File 3008 does pass and its title agreed to. Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for a brief recess for the purposes of appointing conference committees. To that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. Senate is in recess. Senate will come to order. Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President. Is there a privileged report at the desk? Yes, there is. Senator, the Secretary will read the report. Senator Miller from the Subcommittee on Conference Committee recommends that the following Senators be and they hereby are appointed as a Conference Committee on Senate File Number 2673. Senators Limmer, Osmek, Matthews, Latz, and Bigham. Senate File Number 4091. Senators Pratt, Rarick, Dames, Senjum, and Friends. House file number 4300. Senators Chamberlain, Coleman, Duckworth, Eichhorn, and Weger. Senator Miller moves that the foregoing appointments be approved. To that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. <laughs> Senator Miller. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Uh, we are going to move. Uh, to a recess, uh, to the call of the president, uh, just to give a little preview of what this afternoon might look like. Uh, we will come in around 1 or 1 o'clock p.m., give or take. Uh, 
my understanding is there's an agreement uh, on the veterans bill, so the hope is to come back and take that bill up uh, yet this afternoon. Uh, just a reminder that it is the National Day of Prayer, so anyone who wants to participate in that, I believe that starts at noon. And Republicans, we will caucus at 1220 promptly, uh, upstairs in 303. So with that, Mr. President, I move that the Senate recess to the call of the President. To that motion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, the motion does prevail. Senate is in recess.